how are how are people feeling? Do you do you find people are depressed? Are they concerned? Are you do you have mental health concerns? Is there well, if we lose one generation of shrimp fishermen, it goes away forever. This is not something we go to school for. My grandfather passed it on to my dad, my dad passed it on to me. And if I go out, that's it, it goes away. This generation goes out, it goes away forever. You lose your culture, you lose your heritage, you lose the fishery, it's gone. This is one of the biggest nursing grounds in South Louisiana. Where everything, the crabs right now are laying eggs, the speckled trout should be laying eggs, the shrimp season should be rolling, but there's nothing. Trojan right now is one of the biggest pelican sanctuary, nesting islands they have in, in this area, in South Louisiana. It's uh, just north of Grand Isle, and they got millions of pelicans on there with their babies, and they can't go nowhere with this all spill. Mariah, come here. Look at this. Oh, so sad, huh? So sad. Usually they got birds diving all over. The pelicans, they, uh, I mean, everywhere you'd look out here, you'd see them. The seagulls, well, right now you don't see the birds even trying to feed or anything. They say it's emulsified, all the red, brownish, red looking stuff, but we've never seen it like that before. That's got to be dispersant. I don't care what they say, that's not normal. <coughs> no, that's probably National Guard. Let's come back up here. When we were here earlier, we saw a, a couple of journalists and they said that they had called in. It's here! It's right here! The point is that you can see that they've constructed these shields that are clearly not working to protect this bird sanctuary from the oil slick. It doesn't look like the Coast Guard is doing much but circling the island. They don't seem to be coming back for that bird. I'll be seeing that poor pelican tonight in my sleep. The one covered in oil out there. I hope that's not the future for all of us. You know, that's, that's a terrible picture to see. I'm Carrie Kennedy, and I'm the president of the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights. I want to thank everyone for coming here tonight to tell us about what your concerns are going forward. Nice to meet you, Mr. Deputy Vice Sergeant. I heard some of your introduction. We have been that bird for many, many years. People may not understand that, but we're that bird. We've been floundering and dying out here for long years. Something that my family's been involved in going back to the early 1800s. Now it's being threatened by an oil spill. And by my association with oil companies, seafood industry, we're going to be looking at an awful long time before we can actually go out there and make a living. And what I call making a living is putting food on the table, paying our utility bills, putting our children through school. So the question is, where do we go? What do we do? Who do we hold accountable? And how do we fix it? I think the first thing ought to be to repeat that this is not an oil spill, uh, but that this is instead an oil drilling disaster. They should police it. That is the government's job, is to police what BP has done and make them fix this. I, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen probably in my grandchildren's lifetimes. But my grandchildren are still going to live in this area. I want it fixed. I want them to be able to get out in the yard and work. I want them to be able to go walk, walk down to the end of my road to the water and actually be able to smell salt air. It's what I've done all my life. And all of a sudden, 
I go down, I step out my front door and I smell oil. There's something wrong with that. 